Hey all. So in the last part I ended up ending the video short because it was getting a bit too long before making it to the uh, redesign where I follow the OpenVSP model a bit more closely. So in this part uh, we're going to be rebuilding the fuselage and uh, rejoining it to a new tail and then doing some more test flights. Uh, the main difference with this fuselage this time compared to the previous one is I made it larger and followed the OpenVSP model a bit more closely. And then I also designed a better wing mount and a tail mount so that more of the composite of the fuselage is uh, joined to the tail so that hopefully the fuselage won't crack at the tail joint like it did on the previous model. Uh, along with that I also made the, I changed the tail spar to a lower diameter tail spar to reduce the weight of the tail. But along with lowering the weight of the tail boom, I also ordered lead weights for the nose so that the model can more closely resemble the open VSP model uh, in terms of where the CG is without having the nose extend so far in front of the main wing. Uh, in terms of the wing and tail services, I left those the same. So the previous video has the build of those. Uh, all the work in this video is just going to be the fuselage and the rejoining the surfaces to the tail. Uh, in terms of the fuselage, I also changed the way that I manufactured the fuselage since the uh, the balloon method didn't work so well last time. And then I also improved the actual composite structure of it to increase the strength some. So in terms of the actual mold, uh, the mold this time is in three parts, the top, the bottom, and the canopy. So for each part, there's also a 3D printed plug that's used to apply pressure to the composite while it's setting. So here's the bottom mold. Uh, so it's the same as, well, it's similar to the way it was made last time, but then there's also a plug that sets into it after you lay in the composites and then it all bolts together to apply pressure. And similar to that, there's the plug for the top along with the mold and then the canopy is pretty similar to the way it was last time uh, since last time the canopy was also made with a 3d printed plug and mold and overall this helped to increase the repeatability and the strength of the uh, composite structure quite a bit uh, and then i also changed some of the materials i used for the composites itself but i'll get more into that uh, during the build in terms of the composites, this time I'm using a mix of 4 ounce fiberglass cloth along with 30 gram per square meter fiberglass cloth that I ordered off of AliExpress. And I'm also using carbon fiber towel to reinforce sections of the fuselage as well. In retrospect, um, the 30 grams per square meter was fine for the surface finish, but I probably should have switched to 50 grams per square meter on the inside and then the four ounce on the innermost layer so I can build up uh, durability and strength. I had a few uh, cracks in the nose due to some crashes that probably could have been alleviated by having more than just the 30 grams per square meter and then the four grams per square meter. Uh, I mean the four ounce cloth. I'm using three strips of carbon fiber towel for the top and the bottom uh, fuselage pieces, three each. Uh, a strip on either side to be on the seam where the uh, fuselage pieces meet together and then one along the top side. So whenever all the fuselage pieces get glued together, there'll be a strip on the top, one on the bottom, and then two on each side where they join.
This time I also embedded a canopy in the top, but since I'm using a 3D printed plug and the mold, uh, the canopy line didn't get embedded into the fuselage piece as well as it did previously. I should have included the canopy recess in the mold a bit so that the canopy could indent better into the fuselage. Here you can see the 3D printed uh, tail boom attachment piece that I used to attach the tail boom to the fuselage, as well as the 1 32nd bass wood sheet that I used for the electronics plate. Under that's also a strip of the 1 32nd inch uh, bass wood that I cut into a strip and glued from the nose all the way back to the tail. Here you can see the 30 gram per square meter fiberglass cloth gives a pretty smooth surface finish. It looks a lot nicer than the 4 ounce and is a lot more uniform, but I should have added some more layers on the inside of that to reinforce the fuselage because the nose ended up getting some cracks in it from some crashes. I used some foam putty to add some fillets for the main wing onto the fuselage to help smooth out the joint a bit more. One takeaway I learned from these discus launches is to not wear a loose band on the arm you're launching the plane with, otherwise you can end up having a pretty interesting time. On this launch, the tail boom ended up actually snapping aft of where it meets the fuselage. Uh, this is primarily due to it being protruded, but also I changed to a 4mm outer diameter, a 3mm inner diameter carbon fiber rod, so it's only 1mm wall thickness, and cracks propagate pretty easily through protruded carbon. So I ended up doing some repairs cool. and trying some more flights, but uh, any sort of nudge to the tail just ended up causing the cracks to propagate out further from where I ended up repairing it. Dead. So this little jostle on the ground right here ended up cracking the tail some more. Is it dead? In terms of damage to the plane from those last crashes, it's mainly cracking in the fuselage where the 30 gram per square meter cloth is used. Uh, both sides have a bit of damage to the nose, uh, but that should be pretty easy to fix with another layer of cloth on top. Uh, there's a bit of twist in the tail now. If you can probably see it in uh, the main wing versus the vertical and horizontal stabilizer a bit off. Um, that's a little bit more difficult to fix because of the cracking in the in the tail boom but I've done some some quick repairs to it mainly by putting a bit of fiberglass there um, there's a bit more slack in the lines to the control surfaces now compared to what was there before I'm not entirely sure where that's from maybe the I don't think the plate would have been pulled back at all so I'm guessing there's just some misalignment now from the from the tail spar breaking 
Uh, overall, I think I think I'm probably done trying to discus launch this. I'm probably going to cut off the the fingertip grips on each side to reduce the weight a bit, and then I 3D printed some some motor mounts for 8520 brushed motors, and I think I'm just going to slap two on each side. Uh, they can generally do about 40 grams of thrust per motor, so 80 grams is almost all of the weight of this plane. So I'll pretty much turn it into a powered glider instead of a discus launch glider. Uh, whenever I make more progress on the nebula, I think I'll probably pick this back up and make a larger wing and select a different tail spar. Ideally, I would have liked to use a mandrel wound carbon fiber rod, but they I, I haven't been able to find any in this size, a uh, four millimeter outer diameter. Uh, the company I bought this one from has a four millimeter by two millimeter protruded rod. This one's four millimeter by three millimeter. And the, the two millimeter wall thickness will probably fare a bit better. So I might make the second one with that or go up to a five millimeter rod like I was originally using. And I'm gonna extend the wing a bit as well whenever I eventually get to that. But for now, I think I'll just turn this into a motor glider and keep working on some of my other projects. Yeah, thanks for watching.